lifting up Jesus and opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. When John MacArthur began to go off doctrinally, when he began teaching very serious heresy, such as it's possible to take the mark of the beast, worship the Antichrist, in effect worship Satan incarnate, uh, worship the image of the beast, and sell your soul to the devil for the mark, he said it will be possible for those people to be saved and go to heaven in direct rejection of the book of Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 12. Directly contradicting the scripture. John MacArthur has, of course, gone off majorly, uh, doctrinally and theologically. But one of the things he contended in his theotribe tribe against all charismatics and Pentecostals was that a cultural-based Christianity that was deviant began with the Jesus movement, then with the charismatic movement, then with Chuck Smith, and with people like this, as if to set the precedent. He's speaking absolute nonsense, and I will debate him on front of a camera anywhere, anytime, because he's teaching historical revisionism. What he says is a lot of absolute, demonstrably false rubbish. That's what you do, Mr. MacArthur. That's what you have become. You say the line of faith from the apostles came to Augustine and then down to the reformers, to people like Calvin and co, Luther, etc. And that this cultural influence Christianity began with the Jesus movement, the hippies, the charismatics, and so forth, as if that was the precedent. Augustine, your hero, platonized the church. He began translating the church into platonic philosophy. Under the influences of Cyprian of Carthage, he introduced the sacramentalism that became a nascent and incipient predecessor to what evolved into Roman Catholicism. He adopted from Ambrose of Milan, Erastianism, making the church a political power when Jesus said his kingdom was not of this world. Augustine was one of the framers of post-millennialism saying that the millennium was fulfilled in the church, the basis of dominion theology, reconstructionism, etc. Augustine began teaching the lie of the visible and invisible church, that the body of Christ was composed of people who were saved and unsaved by changing one word in one verse. From the parable of the wheat and tares, instead of the field being the world, which the scripture teaches or states, it becomes the church. So therefore, sprinkle the infants. You claim to be a Baptist. Augustine favored infant baptism. At least his followers certainly did, even though he was probably baptized by immersion, according to the archaeological discoveries underneath the Duomo Cathedral in Milan, where he was baptized. He was one of the architects of replacement theology. He said that the church can use violence to convert people because Jesus was knocked off a horse violently. On top of that, he was a Platonist. He basically rewrote Christianity as a Greek philosophy to accommodate the pseudo-Christianization of the Roman Empire in accordance with the political ambitions that came from Constantine, followed by the Emperor Justinian. He paved the way for Roman Catholicism. In fact, he was one of its founders doctrinally. This is your Augustine. He may have been right, and he was certainly right in his refutation of the heretic Pelagius, who denied original sin. But you'd be hard-pressed to find anyone who's done more damage to the body of Christ and to the history of the church seminally than Augustine. Replacement theology, post-millennialism, infant baptism, the visible and invisible church. The church can use violence to convert people. Sacramentalism, this is your Augustine. Augustine, of course, inspired both Calvin and Luther. Let's begin with your beloved John Calvin. 
Severitus was a heretic. But there were many other people who were just Anabaptists. How many people were burned by Calvin's Geneva, the police state that Calvin and Pharrell organized? How about 250, approximately? Burned alive in the name of Jesus Christ! A Saudi-style Mutawa religious police, you had the equivalent in Geneva. This is your John Calvin. What about those who influenced uh, Calvin? Pharrell. You think this was the line from the apostles? What did the apostles say to burn people? But let's look at the people who Calvin influenced. Let's look at the Puritans. You want to talk about crazy people, crazy Christians, lunatics? Oh, the Lord showed me this. Oh, the Lord showed me that. That's the lunatic fringe of the charismatic movement. That's ultra-Pentecostalism. And that is the Puritans. In Cromwell's England, with the witch hunter general, and in Salem, Massachusetts, the Lord showed me Mary Jones is a witch in a dream. Oh, the Lord showed me in a vision she's a witch. Spectral evidence. People were happily executed in the name of Jesus Christ based on spectral evidence because some religious kook said the Lord showed them. This was open mysticism. It was demonic. Old women were tied to the end of poles and drowned in England by Cromwell's witch hunter general, an ardent Calvinist. And then if that wasn't enough, the English Puritan Calvinists and the Scottish Presbyterian Calvinists massacred each other in the name of Jesus Christ. Massacred each other in a Christian jihad. This is Calvinism. This is your heroes, the Reformers and the Puritans, who you lauded. Now, I'm not saying all the Reformers were like that. A minority were not. But Calvin and his followers? And Luther? You agree with Luther and the Peasants' Revolt that the peasants should have been stabbed in the back or that every Jew should be hoarded into a corral and forced to confess Christ at the point of a knife? Martin Luther directly inspired the writing of Mein Kampf by Adolf Hitler. These are your heroes? This is the line of faith from the apostles, you say? No, not all the Puritans were crazy. I have high regard for people like Richard Baxter. I don't know if you want to consider John Bunyan to be a Puritan, but certainly there are others like Joseph Aileen. But with John Owen, the greatest Puritan theologian, as his personal chaplain and spiritual advisor, look what Cromwell did. Look what he did to the Irish. It's difficult to see Irish Catholics evangelize to this day because of the history of what the Puritans did to them. Genocide. We're the elect. We can do this. We can take your land. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. You're a Catholic. You're wicked, so we can take your land. That was their theology. Let's trace the theology of Calvinism whenever it influenced the social fabric. How about slavery and Jim Crow in the American South with segregation or apartheid in South Africa with the Dutch Reformed Church? You're a Baptist. You know very well the reason there's Southern Baptists and American Baptists. And while there are <clears throat> Methodists and Southern Methodists is the issue of slavery. The Calvinistic Methodists and the Calvinistic Baptists were pro-slavery. You want to talk about the culture influencing the church? No, that did not begin with the hippies or the Jesus freaks or the charismatic movement. There's only one of two possibilities, John MacArthur. Either you are a religious liar or you have somehow morphed into an ignoramus a historical revisionist who doesn't know what he's talking about. The reframing, not the recontextualization, but the redefinition of Christian dogma and theology preceded the 1960s. It preceded the charismatic movement. It goes back to the early church. 
charismania did not begin in the 20th century with the Zusa Street or the a charismatic movement. It went back to the church in Corinth. It went back to lunatic fringe charismatic movements in the early church, such as Montanism. I'll debate you in front of a panel of church historians, conservative evangelicals. I will play the film of what you said at your church and prove you to be a liar. I would urge you to repent. You're a man who's lost his way. Maybe you've lost your mind. You can take the mark of the beast and worship the Antichrist and still be saved. You've lost your mind. You've certainly lost your way. Don't worry about charismatics and Pentecostals misleading people. That is true, but that's not your worry. Your worry is you are misleading the people of God, John MacArthur. The word of God doesn't lie. Church history doesn't lie. The Sanhedrin lie. And you seem to have joined the Sanhedrin. Come on, John MacArthur. Let's get the church historians. Let's get the Greek scholars. Let's get you a film out of what you actually said. And you debate me on front of a camera. We'll live stream it so the world can watch. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you for listening, everyone.